Liju received her Master's of Fine Arts at UNC Chapel Hill in 2015, so very recently. And before that, her BFA from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago in 2009. She was also a teaching fellow um, at UNC, and she, her work is held in public collections, um, including FedEx Global Education and Argo Consulting Company. Um, I just want to say a couple of words to set the stage this evening. This is, again, this is an opportunity to be in dialogue with one another. So Andrew's going to talk for about 20 minutes about her practice. And I think your journey and how you got to North Carolina is also really unique and really interesting. And then I'm going to ask a few questions and open up the floor to you all. So thank you so much for being here. And without further ado, Andrew Kim. Thank you. Hello, thank you for the, this introduction. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here tonight and thank you for coming this talk. I would like to especially thank you to Cora to throughout the several months <laughs> to make this happen. It's been exciting experience as an artist working with amazing, brilliant curator. <laughs> I'm most appreciative. <coughs> <laughs> I'm shy. I'm shy. I'm shy. Uh, today I would like to share my the artistic trajectory from the previous work to current work. Okay. Uh, Can everyone hear? Okay. Yes. My voice is okay. Super. Okay. Before I talk about the series of lip figure and the role play, I would like to show my the previous work. Actually. Before I moved to the North Carolina, as I especially interested in the understanding and representing the people's lives in the various parts of society, such as uh, immigrant worker in Korea, the Korean uh, adopted living in the state. The, this image I took in Chicago when I was in undergraduate study, I had to wander around the street all the time. Um, as lugging the, around the medium format camera and tripod, which is really heavy. <laughs> I always <laughs> wanted to throw away, <laughs> especially tripod. <laughs> Not that expensive, like a camera, that's why. Uh, and the, after the before the school and the after school, that was the kind of one of the, my workout. And that it's kind of interesting experience talking with other people as speaking English. Actually, that was the kind of the first time that the living in the another country when I was in Chicago. That's why I really enjoyed the talking the, in the street with the other kind of, all kind of people. The another project I want to share was the Henier series, female diver, literally meaning the sea woman in Korean. I just made this project right before I moved to North Carolina. I utilized the kind of a documentary style which reveals something kind of emotional and personal and psychological, kind of just then the moment my encounter with them. The these women has a century old history of making their own living by catching oyster, sea cucumber, the uni, and skid and octopus. They hold their breath over two minutes to dive the 20 meter without the diving equipment, just wearing the level suit and the just glasses, that's all. And the reason I had the interest in the Henya, actually my grandmother was a Henya when I was a little. My grandmother passed away almost seven years ago. The, after she passed away, I took the other Henya portrait to remember her life. That's my, the beginning of this project. I had a special bond with the, my grandmother because she was uh, raised me when I was little, just two years. But to portray her life with the photography, my inspiration came from below the sea level. 
the left image was taken by me when I was in 12 years old. That, um, that at that time, I was not the photographer, professional <laughs> photographer. <laughs> just took it, and the, which is my first portrait I made. This is a kind of family portrait, and uh, my grandmother holding my back. <laughs> okay. The, in Korea, there is a saying, Henya do the work of the death in the land of the living because they hold their breath over two minutes, every two minutes, during the maybe seven hours in their new job. Oh my God, that, their holding breath means it's kind of dead, right? They always had the kind of, uh, having the headache all the time. They're ever, they started, normally they started this job maybe around the, they're almost 15 years old right after I graduated elementary school. They didn't go to the, any high school and uh, middle school at all. Just their, nowadays, and the, their the age, average age is uh, almost 75 years old, 80 years old. They're, they have been doing this job almost 60 years. My grandmother also almost 60 years doing that job, for doing that job. When I was little, when I was young, I actually never realized how difficult and physically demanding job was because I love eating seafood, just that's all. <laughs> My grandmother cut the all kind of uni, the skid, all kind of thing, just that's all. I never realized how difficult the job was, but and the, ever since she passed away, I really wanted to capture a kind of a fond, a fondness and emptiness I felt for her in my work. And as taking the photo of the other Henya who knew my grandmother, and I can I reminded I was reminded of how great she was, what kind of life she had led. I also try to go to the sea to take some picture. I try to the several times to take the picture. I stayed just three hours. Oh my God, after <laughs> the taking picture, I exhausted. Even just two or three hours. At this time, the 2013, the January, it's winter time, it's cold. It's colder than here. It's not that the, not like a New York. It's but still cold, right? Oh my God! I cannot believe it. <laughs> <laughs> they normally just bend their back like this, but uh, when they're in the water, oh my God, they're princess like, mm -hmm. just moving and they're catching the oyster, the all kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I cannot see anything when I was in the water, in the sea. Because, but they're catching the uni a lot. Oh my God, I cannot see any, any uni. I wanted, I wanted to sell the uni, but I couldn't find any uni <laughs> at all. Yeah, she's holding the all uni. They're also having a lunch in the water. This is kind of bad. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> yeah. They put the normally soy milk or just banana kind of thing. That's all. They, they started to work around 7 a.m. They normally work, wake up the 4.30 and 5, 5 a.m. to check the weather condition and then started this job maybe around 6.30 and 7 until the, the afternoon, maybe 3 or 4.
the next um, the project I just want to show the my documentary style project uh, Korean Adati series. I realized I have been trying to tell my story through my work. I think the to me the photography is another language to me. The first subject matter right after moving in the North Carolina was the this this Korean adoptee living in the state. Also some images include the Chinese adoptees and also Ethiopia adoptees, but I just want to say the adoptee series. And this is also kind of a journey to find my lost friend when I kiss, much like a grandmother series. The, the ad adoptee series is a way to remember my friends when I was a child, when I was a kindergarten, I had a friend who suddenly left my world. At that time, I didn't know where she gone, and I just, I think I can remember just to cry all, all day. And then, a few years later, I heard from my mom. She was adopted in a family, by a family in another country. And I can remember her name because I was around five years old. I couldn't remember name, face, anything. Just, I just cried at the time when, she, when I lost my friends. That's all. Ever since she disappeared, I also wanted to the capture kind of a memory when I just relocated in the North Carolina. Uh, as I take the photo of the other adoptee. I was reminded of her. I believe the photography that had some power to bring back into my life through the image and the process I go through to make them. That's why uh, I couldn't remember her face. I couldn't imagine her face at all. That's why I just try to cover the adopted face. Because when I relocated to America, sometimes I felt out of place. Because every step, the calling to the bank, the, oh my God, the taking a call is the hardest one. Because uh, having conversation, it was okay. Because I can get the sense when I talk, right? But uh, having taking a call when I was intern, <laughs> that was so scary. Ringing the bell, I was so scared. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want near the the telephone at all. Yes. Uh, whenever I saw the Asian girl pass by, I try to picture her face and recall all my classmate, displaced classmate from back home. Through the, this adoptive series project, I wish to give the adoptees a space for presenting their experience of life in the state, in any other country, and also how they negotiate the identity here. Uh, let's talk <coughs> about the lead figure and role play. And the experience of living in North Carolina have been informed by the, my practice in terms of conceptual way and the visual way, both way. In 12 by 12 series, in this series, I'm showing two series from the work Refigure and the role play. These two series focus on the clothes and fabric as a subject matter. The reason is that I have been interested in that I'm struck by the idea in terms of trail of life. Because after being born naked into this world, the human being live with the clothes, <laughs> right? The, until the time they're laid to last in the coffin. The, 
in terms of kind of trail of a thread of which textile are composed. Kind of it could be connection connected to the Confucian ideology, the come empty, return empty, kind of the vanity of life. That's the interesting idea. I'm struck by that idea. That's why I carry all kind of fabric in my car, in my studio. <laughs> The, especially the refigure series is the kind of a survey time, the memory and displacement, the, the relationship between the human body and the physical and material world, as well as carrying around the this bundle all around the North Carolina, also Woodstock and the Atlanta all over the state. Sometimes from the east to west, from the west to east. I went to the different places with the kind of bundle, and I think this kind of a performance represents my nomadic life style in part of my life. Actually, once a year, I have been moving to new space. Even in Chapel Hill, when I was in study in the, at the UNC Chapel Hill, I just moved to the another unit in the same apartment. Every, every one, once a year, I just moved. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> Always packing the, my stuff and the, uh. This image I took in Korea when I visited during the MFA program. This figure is actually my mom. My mom is wearing my grandmother's the clothes, which is a Korean traditional clothes, and also wearing the Korean traditional mask. This is kind of same idea of the trail of life. The, I am taking that picture. My mom is wearing my grandmother's, her mother's the clothes. And the, we are looking at the same direction, right? It's this kind of uh, the trail of life that I want to express. I think the passage and the present and the anticipation of time is our, our, our significant aspect of my life as well. And the performance of wearing my grandmother's clothes, in, I think, entail the journey to the past through the present and the toward the future too. Kind of it narrates maybe recovery and rebirth of memory, much like uh, adopted the adopted friends and the remembrance of my grandmother or the kind of stuff. This is me. The, I also use the mask for the covering the figure's face. I think that the mask related to the kind of, a, this is my, one of the, my strategy, it's related to the quest of my identity. I feature myself in the frame to kind of enact my recollection as wearing the mask. I really intended to engage the kind of expressive conceptual and the cultural quality of the form and color, form and color by using the various fabric from the all over the place, from the Korea, the from the west and east. Also, I just researched a lot of fabric when I was in the LFA program. Uh, some photographs of series I show my back. The reason is why I feel it's visible in my back, but the turning away from the camera allow me to feel comfortable when I am not stable and or focused. I think unlike the front, I can make up on, but the, Bag cannot be easily adorned. 
therefore show itself in more toothful manner. That's why I took the backside. And also I avoided the directly confronting the camera by shredding myself in a way made me invisible woman while concealing my kind of introspective self. I try to the examine and enact a kind of culture conflict. I really wanted to the harmonize in the society as well, but I don't want to show my identity kind of thing. It's kind of contradiction, but uh, also that I'm showing my bed, just covering myself in the kind of weird haunted place. This is actually took in the North Carolina. I really try to find the kind of location which convey kind of a haunted feeling, kind of empty the space in the especially North Carolina. This is the image I show in the show. I use my camera to examine how my portrayal as an anonymous figure, both visually conformed to America's surrounding. I took this image in the Bermuda, and but also convey displacement. And also I wanted to express my sense of estrangement by not only shielding my future, but also function as a visual barrier. I can see the whole the, the, near the camera setting, but the, the viewer cannot penetrate to my face. Role play series. Mm, this is actually my favorite one. The, my mom loved this series, actually, because my mom always talk about the art should be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take the picture a kind of a dark or kind of thing. You're going to follow that kind of art. <laughs> You're going to be dark. Or, no, don't, don't say that, mom. <laughs> you have an artist, artist daughter. Don't say that. <laughs> the role play series kind of touch upon decorative element and the visual pleasure in a way the kind of a, that previous series we figured didn't. The refigure appear more poetic, dark, interior, and lonely, which my mom hated. <laughs> too dark, too feel lonely kind of thing. But the role play may also lead in a different way, but the superficially belong all together. I could become the other also. I consume myself in the pattern of the fabric. As I, I appear the anonymous, I you guys can not see any kind of clue the this figure, the woman or not. But I express I chose kind of this polka that image express myself a little bit more. Uh, as I appear the kind of anonymous, I become ha I have a more confidence. I become a powerful, mysterious kind of thing. <clears throat> the color is a little bit weird on this screen. But the moving in the North Carolina, it, that made me change the whole style of the kind of photography way especially visual way. I changed the scare. I talk about the, my work a lot with the, my old committee member, Ellen <laughs> Hong An. They sometimes criticize a lot, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I really enjoyed it. I realized after graduation, they love me. <laughs> now I can, I knew that, I know that. 
I realized using myself as a photographer and subject, I have been able to kind of achieve the more powerful and symbolic image. That's why I use myself in the brand. size to capture <laughs> the best work and I can't say that I mean all of the work is really powerful I think so to have to select two series is, is a painful choice every time <laughs> so I'm glad that you all got to see more of this work and you know see the range of it in that range from documentary to more poetic let's say uh, portraiture um, I'm just going to ask a couple of questions yeah. and then I, I'm really more interested in hearing from you. I'm going to do this as an icebreaker, hopefully. Um, so, one of the things that strikes me, Miju, is um, your role as a woman mm -hmm. in this work. Um, and, I, and I guess I want to ask a very broad question, which is, um, certainly I see how that is a very nuanced conversation in the work. How did you experience coming to the United States as a woman? Um, in terms of social interactions, um, and did those experiences or observations inform this work at all? Just seeing the way that maybe women express themselves here or don't. Um, did you feel connected to other women here that you met, or did you feel very different? Mm, I think the woman, the as a woman myself, and the it's really difficult to put in my the in this society because I'm I don't want to say kind of a major and a minor but uh, I when I was mm, when I moved to the state I I don't I didn't realize anything because I need to focus on the learning English Mm -hmm. That's all. But after the graduate uh, school of art of Chicago, and uh, I've been thinking a lot, uh, what's my role as a woman, as a photographer? Mm -hmm. What can I do? That's my big question. Mm -hmm. I'm also the question a lot about that question. Still, I'm still struggling with that kind of idea. What can I do? What, what's my next step? Not just making the, my work, myself. It's kind of a, my meditation though, the taking photographs. Mm -hmm. and making work is kind of meditation. The everything, just to chill and the, come think, think about the, my role in society. I, I, I don't want the express really strongly the I cannot say I'm the activist or something, but I always think I need to say something through my work, everything. That's my the question myself. The I'm not sure I can answer right answer, but I'm thinking yeah, the lot of I'm still thinking. No, what can I do? Mm -hmm. Well, so much of the way that you honor the matrilineal tradition and your grandmother and your mother mm -hmm. and yourself, mm -hmm. um, I find that really powerful in terms of gender. So it's interesting to see that in an American context and, and where we go from where we go from there. Mm -hmm. um, I also just wanted to ask you if there were other artists that you're looking at these days that have been interesting to you that have been informed your practice in any way? No, I definitely say the Suja Kim mm -hmm. is a Korean the photographer in the performance. 
the sculptor, she is a sculptor. She is an old lady, and uh, I think I just researched a lot about her work. Also, Yayumi Kasao, the Prokadat one, is kind of the meaning of the Prokadat in the photograph is kind of totally different. Totally different, but uh, I think I definitely influenced by her work. I don't want to copy, but think different. The Prokadat is kind of represent the, her work, definitely. But I try to think about the other way. And yes, I'm still studying the Suja Kim and the Yoyumi Kasuma. Mm -hmm. That's interesting because they're women of another generation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Both of mm -hmm. them are Asian and that's very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, does anyone else have a comment or question or thought? And thank you to Ellen and all the folks who came from Chapel Hill today. Oh, um, thank you. Really, really great to have you here. Uh, and those of you who are on the stairs, please come and sit down if you want to sit down. If you feel emancipated in the stairwell, then do that. But you're, you're welcome to, to cozy up with us. There's some seats here. I don't know whether it's a question or a comment or part of a dialogue, but what um, I was struck when you mentioned in your talk that photography is a, a language mm -hmm. for you. And it, hearing you talk about your past in Korea and your present here, I'm aware of how brave it is to, mm -hmm. to make such a huge shift. Exactly. And what accompanies that is needing to express oneself in a language that is you're not your native tongue. Mm -hmm. So this whole idea of language, just, just I'm listening to you and looking at your work. And the last pieces you showed are so very abstract and mm -hmm. it made me wonder if the movement towards work that seems more abstract in its structure and sort of integrated in the, the figure and the ground to me seemed almost like gaining a fluency in the language and whether you noticed over time being in the United States speaking English on a regular basis, whether that shift in how you have to communicate in your daily life has impacted the communication that comes through your work? Yeah, definitely. The, every time. Yeah. <laughs> every time. The speaking English. Actually, uh, at the, the, when I started the study in Chicago, I just watching the all kind of uh, sitcom the drama to study English. But I just fall in just the contents, not English. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, I, I, I really love the friends. <laughs> I, already, <laughs> I already watched 10 times. <laughs> oh, for eight years. But now I can understand 80%, 90% right now. When I started the, the watching the friends, I, I don't get any a sense of humor. <laughs> Why are they laughing? <laughs> Not funny at all. What does it mean? Even though I just subtitle the or the caption, but mm, not funny at all. <laughs> oh my god! I can't live in the, this state. I should go back. <laughs> at that time, I think like that way. In the school, they're they're laughing. Okay, I. I think I need to laugh <laughs> right now, that kind of thing. In the Chicago, oh my God, so torturing. It's so stressful. I don't get any sense of humor. But that, that's not language problem. I think it's a kind of culture difference. Well, I don't and, get and, the and sense and of language the language and culture are yeah. intertwined. Yes, which is, yes. You know, and art is a language. And so as you gain fluency, which is a more abstract, way of understanding mm -hmm. things, it's interesting to see that enhanced mm -hmm. abstraction in no. your work too. Yeah. Nowadays. And humor maybe, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, when I watch the friend, oh my god, the best <laughs> sitcom. Oh my god, so funny, Joyce, <laughs> you're so funny. <laughs> now my, in the, nowadays, my reaction, yes. Yeah. But I also appreciate that comment because I think one of the things about your work, Miju, is that 
um, it's difficult to read emotionally, and, and I love the space that that opens up. Like, mm -hmm. what does it mean to be shrouded? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a female figure you can tell, sometimes it's genderless. You know, um, it's, it's deeply psychological, but it's very ambivalent at the same time. And so I think that opens up a really interesting space, and maybe that's that space in which you were kind of gliding between languages that it, it's, it's, a, it's a space that you don't strike upon when you're totally familiar, I think, in a, in a context. So, I, I mean, if it takes Friends to, to get to that, I'm going to start watching Friends. <laughs> struck me to want to talk tonight. I mean, I work with you in the grad department. Yeah. Here's we, my we're so proud chair. Of you. <laughs> but it struck me to see it in this context from the, the oyster diver pictures to this recent work that, you know, in a way they're shrouded as well. And you don't see them. And even when they're unshrouded, their eyes are probably closed because they're so exhausted mm -hmm. and headaches. And they're, they look made up because they're so flushed. Mm -hmm. and, and then you're immersed in this fabric. I mean, the, the transitional projects, which I also love, but this last work where you're shrouded in the same fabric that is the background, mm -hmm. you almost disappear mm -hmm. in a way that they almost disappear, like you loved uni, but you didn't even know the work that it took mm -hmm. for you to eat that, you know, you didn't appreciate the labor that went into it, but it all seems very connected, both through, mm -hmm. I think, language and culture, but also the role of women. I mean, it's, I don't want to say it's feminist work, because like you said, you, you don't consider yourself an mm -hmm. activist. But I think it's it's presenting the role or position of women across cultures in a really open, and I think ambivalent in a powerful way, not a weak ambivalence, mm -hmm. but a, an ambiguous. Ambiguity has a lot of power. Mm -hmm. you know, you're not making an overt statement, but you're presenting it in this really powerful visual way. I think it's, I don't know, it's very interesting to see it this way, mm -hmm. chronologically, and I find the last work so similar to the mm -hmm. first work of mm -hmm. the divers. It, I know it's very different, but it's also very similar. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. circle. That's not a question. <laughs> <laughs> I love her comment. Does anyone else have comments or burning questions? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like that image at the end of the kind of Shador-like figure, but the, which kind of matched the drapes here. Do you want to go back to that image with the floral Because it pattern? kind of, it was a kind of, that one, because it kind of connects the Western and Eastern culture. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a Western decorative element, but, it, but it, yet we think of the Shador, this kind of women's covering as something from the East, you know. And you being Korean is like a kind of three-dimensional and kind of take on this kind of dialogue that's been going. But I would also say that the work is a kind of history of woman, womanhood, mm -hmm. in the sense that there's all different, there's the past, and there's the present, and there's the future. And um, it's kind of like history is, as we know, with political events are like way out of whack. I mean, there's a time lag between mm -hmm. things. And so we're still fighting wars and things that are like thousands of years old, mm -hmm. and, there were, and yet there are, there's progress, you know, some, some areas of progress that are, you know, way into the future that we've already seen. So, mm -hmm. so it's a kind of, I think it is a kind of historical feminist work in a way. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the, your, your point about the comedy or not understanding jokes, I think I would just suggest that, because I, I, I've been in a lot of different world cultures and hearing humor, mm -hmm. either in conversation or on television or films or whatever. And I think it's like you have to just trust yourself to not listen to the words, but just sense the timing, because jokes are like architecture. There's a structure there that repeats itself mm -hmm. constantly. So it's like you don't even have to worry about what's being said. It's the, the joke is just almost like an orgasm. <laughs> it's, it's something that just happens, it climaxes, and then it goes away. That's the joke. So I think it happens, you know, I'm always laughing in, con in conversations of languages that I don't understand, and I'm usually like almost on You're the right. same beat that they are, you know. Like, I don't understand. So I think you just have to trust yourself in those it's kind of situations. I know. <laughs> but I, I, I like the work a lot. You know? Thank you.
Um, I have a question. I noticed in all of the shrouded works, each is folded or wrapped differently. Mm -hmm. And I was, <laughs> this may sound silly, but how in the world did you come up with all these different ways? Did you, of course it was purposeful, but um, I think that's really neat. It could have been boring if you hadn't varied it so much. I tried the kind of maybe the each image I tried the almost 100 pose 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 make like this mm -hmm. or make like this or make like this I just want to express myself but I couldn't just uh, just to try it with uh, just a white sheet nothing mm -hmm. it doesn't look like any figure at all I tried a lot of the like this or the the line in the carpet I cover also another image I just cover the with the whole the sofa when I was in school they just cover with the whole the big couch mm -hmm. let me see maybe the sofa, yeah, yeah uh -huh. which I don't remember that this one oh, the, we didn't see I that just one. Yeah. yes I just made like this I tried a lot of Posure to make the kind of a yes. One of the things that this is totally tangential, but you know, you were mentioning Diego this um, historical continuum and and different kind of cross cultural nature of a woman being covered, and I feel like it would be really interesting, um, you know, if we were talking about a burqa, for example, in this conversation. A kind of compare to perform a compare and contrast of, you know, what kind of attitudes do we project on the idea, onto the idea of a woman being covered culturally and otherwise? Um, I think it would be really interesting to to think about that. Of course, this is so much more open. It's not, you know, it doesn't have any specific religious connotation at all. It's something you're creating yourself, mm -hmm. but. But I wonder if we transpose some of those ideas into this space, um, maybe ideas of submissiveness or, you know, anonymity or, you know, on and on and on. So I just wanted to, to make that random comment that <laughs> just came to me. I saw someone else had a hand somewhere while I was listening. I thought um, the first two, the, the more documentary projects, the, uh, the one with the, the divers, mm -hmm. um, and then the uh, the adoptees, I thought it was a really interesting, um, maybe you could speak more about it, but I noticed the contrast in how you photograph them, especially in the light, was like, couldn't be any more different. There was this very familiar and beautiful and soft and natural and contrast in the divers. Mm -hmm. And then when we came to the States with these adoptees, it was sort of like a super sitcom. Mm -hmm. like there was this blanket of just, mm -hmm. everything was lit. There was no contrast. You know, it felt almost like a, like a diorama. Um, it was really effective um, and interesting. It was very formal, uh, and I don't know if that's if you can speak to that or I'm just going to speak. I'm sorry. Can you go back mm -hmm. to some of those images? I feel like it's haunting. Because maybe you can guess that because I just took in the indoor mm -hmm. situation because uh, the most of the Henya work the, just took in outside mm -hmm. and or in the water and uh, maybe I just mm, that's not really specific strategy mm -hmm. but <laughs> I should use the lighting the big mm -hmm. lighting and uh, just to control the these the two figure I just want to focus on the two figure mm -hmm. the gesture the po posture that's why I just use a kind of two light in which the looks like that just a fat mm -hmm. that's kind of a little bit the less contra contrast less contrast than the Hanyo's work is kind of a, the actually the Hanyo work just I just want to pop up the, the just focused on the their face mm -hmm. and the expression. That's why I use the 
the or the color the the glass and the background i just even though the documentary style that's kind of almost most of my work just stays a little bit uh, in some way because i choose the background color and also I, it's connected to the glass color and the background this also i studied a lot uh, when i was in the uh, before I studied the MFA degree, I didn't know the color series at all. First, mm -hmm. I just uh, look at, I just put the, all the kind of color match diagram in my <laughs> phone and just find the, the, which one is a good color for this color. That's all. That's my theory. But after the <laughs> going to the MFA degree, the GF told me you should study the color theory. And this, just send me the, oh my God, tons of list of the, the color book. And then, yes, yeah. I'll look it up. The, I, I should stay in the library the several times. <laughs> you, you should stay here and then look at all the, this color theory and then you can find out all the color match. Then I think after that research and study got better. Especially, I think about the, when I take the each image or think about the color as well. Even the landscape, I find all the kind of color, the green, this green, the go, go match with this blue, and all kind of things. Most of my photographs are staged. Anyone else? Yes. Just one, one last comment. The first, uh, the first uh, adoptee photograph, it made, uh, all I could think of is this poor child was this one? a little girl and she was adopted into this family with this maniac who wants to be <laughs> African and Native American, you know, I mean, it's just awful. <laughs> So that's the first thing I thought of. Poor baby, she must have been so afraid when she first walked into that. I can't believe there's a lion there. You know, that must have been very strange yeah, well, for I, her. I think it's, she doesn't care at all. The, her no, husband yeah, collect, no, yes. Yeah, her yeah. husband collect all that kind of animal from all over the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the, the, her expression, I don't care. Do what you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I live this really fancy house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is her husband's home. She's married. So yeah. this is not the house she grew up in. Oh, which no. Is the no. Mm -hmm. no, no, she didn't say that before, but she just said it. So it changes the way you look yeah. at it. <laughs> but definitely you feel that cultural displacement. I mean, you, or at least you can project that onto the image, mm -hmm. I think, very readily, as you're saying. Yes. I used to, uh, what exactly type of camera did you use? I mean, did you do just one specific camera, or did you use a bunch of different types of camera, or the, did you use a digital camera? What? I try to a bunch of different cameras. Sometimes, if I am accessible to the film camera, I really like a medium format or the large format camera. But the, especially the Henio work, I couldn't carry all the medium format. Also, the Henya doesn't want to take the picture, the sustain of the one or two minutes. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't wait for my project. I'm so tired. <laughs> Don't do that. It's, especially after they're, they're working, they're so mean. They're, they're so mean because it's so cold. They feel nothing. They want to they really want to go to their home to shower, take the shower. And uh, after they just came out from the sea, can I take the picture? No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Don't take my face. You don't, you can't use my face at all. They're so aggressive when I, even though they, they're all my grandmother's friends, but they didn't care. They, 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 they didn't care who you are. No, I'm 
really hard right now. Don't take any picture of me at that time. But I always begging, begging, just one more shot. One more shot, please. Just one more, just the last one. And then I took this <laughs> almost 12, 12, 20 images though. <laughs> That's my strategy, just begging. Just one more, just one more. One more shot, please. <laughs> Yeah, that's my one of strategy. Yep. So you you shot those with a digital camera? Yeah, digital camera. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I would just like to say that I confess that when I saw the polka dot picture on your website, uh huh, and I said, amazing. Well, this is something I need to go and see, mm -hmm. and that's why I came, and I'm glad I came here and mm -hmm. saw your work and listened to. This such a young age, you've done a great job. And when you mentioned about different yet similar, and you mentioned about you mentioned about burka, mm -hmm. and now you know as soon as you mentioned those things, I start looking at your pictures in shrouded, draped. Mm -hmm. Is it hiding or is it blending? Mm -hmm. Two completely different things. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you hiding from everybody else? Are you just trying to blend in mm -hmm. into what is there? Yeah. And yeah, you mentioned um, Miju uses the phrase cultural camouflage, which I think is very rich and mm -hmm. speaks to what you're talking about. And we could kind of try to hash that out for what, what does that mean for a long time? Are you hiding or are you assimilating or are you separating yourself? Yeah. Definitely. Thank you for coming. I'm so glad. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Thank you guys so much. You can continue the conversation with me, Drew, of course. Please eat the snacks because they're gonna, <laughs> I'm going to eat them by myself. <laughs> I need your help. And also the galleries, the main gallery, I don't know what time it is, but the main galleries are open until 8 if you want to dip down in there. And thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.